powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on KAJ, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Don Fisher. The Department of Interior says charter flight travel by Secretary Ryan Zinke is consistent with that of previous Interior Secretaries. And that statement was in response to reports in the Washington Post and Politico detailing expenditures for charter flights for Secretary Zinke, including one flight totaling more than $12,000. The private flights include a trip to the Virgin Islands in March, a flight from Las Vegas to Montana in June, and the Post and political reports they indicate Zinke participated in a mix of official government business and political events on each trip. But Zinke's office says the private flights were taken because no commercial options were available and that the flights were pre-approved by the Ethics Office. Travel expenditures by top Trump administration officials are being scrutinized after data showed more than $400,000 in charter flights by Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price. And this afternoon, Secretary Price resigned in wake of that scandal for the use of the private planes for business trips. And switching over to weather, it looks like a su sunny skies won't be sticking around for too much longer. Let's take it over to Russ Thomas for his first forecast. Russ? I sincerely hope you have the opportunity to get outdoors today or you do so this evening if you love the blue skies and 70s because unfortunately I think this will be the last day we see 70s for a long, long time. How about an 80 in Thompson Falls? 79 St. Regis, 75 Hamilton, 72 degrees in Kalispell, and 79 degrees in Troy. We'll look at our satellite and radar image. You can see uh, off to our west, we do have clouds, we do have showers. Again, they're still a little ways away, so I uh, definitely want to get out and enjoy this evening. Once the changes come, they're going to stick around for a while. And as mentioned, 70s, I think a thing of the past, and maybe even 60s when we get into, once we get into tomorrow, I'll have more coming up. All right, thank you, Russ. The Hockaday Museum is hosting their annual plain air plant out this weekend where the artists work and will be dis will, their work will be displayed, sold, and celebrated on Saturday. The event sends artists out to Glacier National Park, the Flathead, and Swan Valleys to paint for three days. Each artist then comes back and chooses two pieces to be displayed at the event and party this weekend. After all that, the artists choose one of their paintings to be exhibited in the museum beyond the sale and party. Museum Director Tracy Johnson says the event is a great chance for artists to experience fall in Montana and Glacier National Park. We're an hour away from the park. We can get our artists out there and a lot of them have never experienced that type of wilderness before. So it's a really unique, unique time for them to come. And the event will run from 5 to 8 p.m. and the ex exhibition will be on display until December 2nd. Salute to Service is brought to you by Flathead Electric Cooperative, your not-for-profit member-owned co-op. On this week's Salute to Service, MTN's Nicole Miller introduces us to Lori Morris, this year's Noble Caregiver Award winner who serves prestige assisted living in Kalispell. You're touching it with your nail, touch it with your finger. Ram. There you Ram. go. For Lori Morris, business is personal. There's, there's it. Morris has served as Life Enrichment Director at Prestige Assisted Living in Kalispell since 2015. When I'm here, it's all about my residents. It's all about their best interest. Never without a smile and a positive attitude, Lori befriends each resident she serves. I care for um, their mental stability, their physical, um, their happiness. Um, I make sure that they get engaged here. Morris's personal touch goes above and beyond as she takes the time to connect with every resident. Hi guys, how are you? Well, I think she's just very good because she is so down to earth. You don't feel like you're going in front of somebody that maybe knows more than you do, even though she probably, I know she does. Recently, Morris learned she's received the 2017 Noble Caregiver in Assisted Living Award. She was chosen from nominees from all over our country. Lori was nominated for the award by her colleagues, who say she not only makes life better here at Prestige Living for the residents, but also for them, and they caught it all on camera. I was astonished. <laughs> um, my boss and um, our CRD came into my office and explained to me, can, can we go outside real quick? And they sat me down on the bench and um, Patty, my boss, started reading me this email and it finally said, Lori Morris is the winner of this NCAL award. We nominated Lori because Prestige started a new wellness program called Celebrations. There's five components of the celebration, um, making new friends, expanding your mind, living better, expressing yourself, making a difference, and enjoying life. 
and we felt like she really excelled. She makes it fun here. <laughs> she makes it a family um, atmosphere. You see people out and about, not just all in their rooms. You see them connecting and getting together. Reporting in Kalispell, Nicole Miller, MTN News. And Morris will be recognized next month at the special awards ceremony during the 11th annual National Center for Assisted Day in Las Vegas later this year. Montana television network stations across the state have now raised over $287,000 as part of their Montana Wildlife Relief Fund. This includes an initial $50,000 in matching funds from the Montana Television Network and its parent company, Cordillera Communications. Carl and Kay Carbon of Great Falls have stepped forward and promised to match another $50,000. As of today, 1,030 people across the country have donated to the cause. If you would like to donate, please go to our website, kaj18.com. Montanans earning minimum wage will notice a slight bump in pay come 2018. Governor Steve Bullock announced today that minimum wage will rise from $8.15 an hour to $8.30 an hour, effective January 1st. In 2017, the industry with the largest number of workers earning minimum wage was the accommodations and food industry, followed by the retail trade industry. The Montana Code annotated requires Department of Labor industry to adjust the state's minimum wage for inflation using the Consumer Price Index. An estimated 3,900 workers, or approximately 0.9% of the workforce, receive minimum wage. Today, the U.S. is pulling more than half the embassy personnel working in Cuba off the island and issuing a new travel warning telling Americans not to go there. It's in response to mysterious attacks on U.S. diplomats warning, working in Havana. Wei Zhang has more from the White House. The State Department is ordering all non-essential personnel assigned to the U.S. Embassy in Havana to leave Cuba. Officials say it is to ensure their safety after a series of mysterious attacks have harmed at least 21 diplomats and their families. The State Department also issued a travel warning to U.S. citizens saying, because our personnel safety is at risk and we are unable to identify the source of the attacks, we believe U.S. citizens may also be at risk and warn them not to travel to Cuba. The State Department says several of these attacks have targeted popular tourist hotels in Havana. And although it isn't aware of any private American citizens uh, that have been exposed, it can't guarantee that they will not be exposed. Embassy employees have reported a wide range of symptoms from hearing loss to cognitive problems. The incidents began late last year and the FBI is investigating. The Trump administration has avoided pointing the finger at the Cuban government for the attacks and expects Havana's continued cooperation with the investigation. Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio is looking for a stronger U.S. response, tweeting, shameful that State Department withdraws most staff from U.S. Embassy in Cuba, but Castro can keep as many as he wants in U.S. Cuba, still trying to clean up from Hurricane Irma, will likely feel the impact of lost American tourism dollars. And for now, the U.S. is also suspending official delegation travel to Cuba, but will continue diplomatic talks in Washington. It's now been nine days since Hurricane Maria flattened Puerto Rico, and the island is pleading for more help. David Begnod is in Aguada on the west coast of Puerto Rico, where people are in urgent need. Desperate yet incredibly patient, Puerto Ricans stood in line in the pouring rain waiting to fuel their cars and gas cans. After what they've been through, the passing shower barely made them flinch. This grocery store has about two weeks worth of food and they're running low on water. Nine days after Maria made landfall, Fabiola Perez stood in line for water for the third day in a row. Frustration, it's not gonna get me anywhere. So we have to stay calm. U.S. Marines are using a filtration system to convert salt water to clean, drinkable water. It produces 150 gallons per hour, but for thousands of people, the solution is simply to leave. They packed this cruise ship headed for the U.S. mainland, some saying they don't plan to come back. The hurricane ripped off the roofs of more than 1,500 homes here in the beachfront city of Aguadilla, according to the mayor, Carlos Mendez, who says his city has been devastated. Do you need Help. Of course I do. I need more help. I need FEMA. Entire towns are isolated by fallen trees and roads that are impassable. In San Lorenzo, the main bridge has been washed out, forcing families to wade through the river with garbage bags of supplies swung over their shoulders. 
John Raven is a regional administrator for FEMA who says damage is slowing relief efforts. A response to uh, an incident like this is complex, it's difficult, and it is not nearly as fast as any of us want. Here in the beachfront city of Aguadilla, the mayor is helping to personally hand out meals. They had 2,000 this morning, but there are 60,000 people who live here. David Begno, CBS News, Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. And coming up after the break, does the used car you're considering have an open recall on it without you knowing? Consumer advocates will tell you how to find out. And holiday shopping already? A new survey shows about 8% of shoppers say they're already done. The full story and more coming up on KAJ.